guys Nick the Kai here let's drift media thank you for coming back to the channel if you're new to that channel please hit that subscribe button down below today we're here with Danny you guys remember Danny from the last video so we're gonna do a toolbox breakdown to show you guys what he's working with here at his shop So, before we get started with this video, do me a favor guys, drop a comment how much money you have spent on tools. I'm curious to see what your guys' numbers are like. So, to start off, I guess I'll go over my tool cart. Uh, I go to this from almost like 80 to 90% of my jobs. Uh, pretty, just, I think, simple layout. I have my Phillips over here, some flex drivers that get into some tight spots. I have quarter inch and then the hex one. I have my flat heads. And all the pry bars I have. These pry bars are pretty great. I really like them. The striking snap on ones. Uh, I have my. Oh, damn. Some ID uh, impact sockets that I use for most of the things. Fit on crank bolts, wheels, uh, suspension, 3 8 semi deeps, universal 3 8 stubby hex, 3 8 chrome, uh, flashlights. Here's all my assortment of ratchets I refer to. It's not the neatest, but it's kind of just was a last minute thing. So this is how it is most of the time. Quarter inch extensions, three inch extensions, wobbles, three inch impact, some more three inch chrome, torques, allens, torques, uh, quarter inch and all varieties. That's what I use most of the time for panels, uh, water pumps, tight areas. Um, this one's all my wrenches, so regular wrenches, and I have ratchet wrenches. My bigger ratchets, so half inch, three eighths torque wrench, three eighths and a half inch torque wrench, and then hip props for cars that don't pull the struts. Just my little impacts I keep on the cart. Half inch to wall, I use this thing on everything. Crank bolts, wheels, axles. I've never had something I can't take off with the right impact sockets. Um, pretty great gun. Next to air, I have an Ingersoll Rand that I use for air, but this thing is pretty reliable. I've never let down the smaller half inch version. 3 8 snap on, I use this thing religiously too. Screw gun, ratchet. This thing works really good for uh, like water pumps, uh, tight to reach areas. Like if you do a lot of sidecars like Honda, Toyota, it fits in nice spots. Uh, brake rotors. Um, wheel sockets and wheel sockets and these Nick Picks pliers, I use these a lot too. Uh, really good when I've worked on cars that have strip bolts, so we'll grab them and take them off. Under the cart, I just have funnels, coolant, engine oil, trans, my hammers, another hood prop, some gloves. Uh, that's pretty much it for the most part. Keep some gloves on the side and some random fluids. And moving forward, this is my toolbox that I have. Um, this is the, the, the yellow cart and this blue toolbox is what I use here in my shop the most. Uh, going into it, we have the socket drawer. So here I work on pretty much everything from um, like almost motorcycles to like uh, old American cars, European cars, uh, domestic cars, newer domestic cars. I have like a RV trailer outside I'm working on. So I kind of really have almost tools for every kind of thing that's out on the road. I still use SAE and most of the stuff I use is metric. So we have like a master set, Allen, Torx, E-Torx. I got them from like a OTC I think and they're pretty cheap. So I picked them up because I kind of have almost all the things that, all the specialty sockets quote unquote. I have like Magnus 3 8 deep and non-deep. Quarter inch 12 point, quarter inch 6 point. Um, kind of 
really just sockets that I have acquired. Some uh, the skinny snap-on 3/8 ratchet, the snap-on what are these called? Flare nut? Oh, crow's foot. Uh, well, flare nut, crow's foot, regular crow's foot. I think these are the strip socket ones. If you have a strip socket, these are pretty cool when you get into those cars that have that issue. Uh, Wobble U Torx, SA standard, hex, stubbies, 3 8s. I most times just use impacts unless they're small things. I, I have all the chromes that'll fit, but 3 8 shallow, 3 8 wobble, 3 8 deep, half inch short, half inch wobble, half inch deep. These snap on sets, I bought these a couple years ago, and if you're working on like big trucks or uh, suspension components like these are great. I really love well wobbles in general. They're my pretty much go tos. Like transmissions, um, starters, motor mounts, some different things you can get into. Tight spots. These are all the kind of special sockets I have. Uh, missed toe points, axle sockets, uh, adapters, and random hero one off sockets. Uh, toe point three eighths. And my extensions for trans. I got this one. This is a skinny one. It kind of flexes a lot, but I think Nico uses this in one of his videos. So he was bagging, so I ended up getting this. Nico! Oh, it's another to box. Just kidding. I have another snap. I have another adapter that I actually bought off Virgil. Nico was hating. <laughs> Screwdrivers, um, longs, regulars, other screwdriver accessories. Uh, files. So this toolbox I have in acquired all by myself. This is actually my cousin's toolbox and some of his tools that he used to be a tech and he didn't have any use for it. So I am now taking over his tools because otherwise it would just sit in the storage unit. So shout out to my cousin Travis. Thank you. Uh, pretty much all the wrenches. You have like the S wrenches, the long zero zero three wrenches, fifteen. What are these? All forty five ratcheting six points. Ratcheting metric stubbies, standard stubbies, picks, short, long, radiator picks, panel poppers, uh, the rest of that pry bar set I had. So I have the straight ones too, the striking, and then the other shorter ones that I keep in here because I don't need them all in the cart. Hammers, for the most part, punches, timing light. Uh, N55, N54, what is it called? The tensioner tool. It's really great to have if you've ever done N54s. It, it saves you a lot of time. So I highly recommend them if you work on BMWs. Uh, this, I think, is a Toyota Honda one, the 14, 17. I don't use it too much just because I just use regular wrench, but I have it because I like to have tools. Kind of the MISC air tools. This is the English sound I was talking about earlier. This pretty much will take off everything. There's an upgraded one now. But this has pretty much taken off most things I've ever ran into as well. Uh, like die grinders, hoses. This one works really great, the snap-on, uh, what is it called? Slide hammer. For I use this a lot for, when my, I have another tool, slide hammer in here for throw bearings. But this one works really great. I've used this on a lot of throw bearings and small, like small things I need to pull off. I don't know how to really explain that. It's really, slide hammer. Yeah. That's kind of what it does. I use it for a tent pull one time. It's kind of cool. Um, paperwork drawer. Any random stuff. Um, yeah, but random stuff. I didn't have time to prep to clean for this video, so. More random stuff drawer. Kind of where I put all my junk. Or things that I use. A ratchet drawer. Really, that's really what it is, ratchets. Uh, extra extensions. Uh, window paint for if you're writing projects, you can put them on the windshield. That's kind of cool. I don't use it that much, but a lot of people do that to write down their things to do list. Drill bits, uh, kind of extractors. This one. I bought it because it was I, I don't know those deal things, but it's that extractor set. Kind of shitty in my opinion. I've used it a couple times and it never really had too much good luck with it. I've got maybe gotten one thing out, but I really like, like the left hand extractors. So, like this one, it's pretty good. The left hand extractor bit. Or, I have like a gen gen another gen generic one that works pretty good. It's my other pop toolbox. 
plier drawer, very unorganized, but it's okay. I can figure out what I need for the most part. Uh, you guys have ever used these, these long hose clamp pliers? They work great for a lot of cars that are in really tight spots. You just pull it and it kind of squeezes it down and locks in place. Those are great. I love them when I need them. Let's see what's in this one. Uh, kind of like my random tools I refer to the most. Uh, oil filter wrench set, so like a uh, Toyota, Volvo, Ford, all those random cars, the Mac ones, pretty good, I like it. Impact driver, you guys, I'm pretty sure you've seen them, they come in handy when you need them to break off like uh, rusted bolts. Uh, let's see what else is in here that I use. I use the rest of this, this is pretty good when you're testing locks for uh, leaking head gaskets or something like exhaust exhaust fumes in the cooling system. It's a very good test when you're testing for head gaskets. Caliper test, uh, uh, disc brake caliper set. I don't use it that much. I have noticed that I use them, that it kind of sits in there. And that's, I think, for your joints. I don't use it that much. On this side. More random stuff, adjustable wrenches, Allen keys, a whole bunch of random Allen keys. Random wrenches, some more e-torque wrenches. Slim wrenches, these are kind of cool if you ever do brakes. And you need something to hold them. These are really thin, so when you have that small, small nut on the inside and you have to break it loose, you can use these. Uh, I don't use them that much, but I've used them every now and then. I, I just too lazy to look for them. Kind of like random special drawer tools I use. Uh, engine holders, fuel line disconnect tools, uh, seal puller, fan clutch tool, 90 degree snap ring pliers. Yeah, I, I have a snap ring pliers set, and none of them had a 90 degree one like this deep. I needed it to rebuild a caliper on a Ford Mustang, like a 90, SN95. So I bought a pair. Safety wire tie if you're working on like motorcycles or uh, like race car stuff, you can put the wire through and lock it into place when you pull this thing. Kind of cool. Spring compressor tool. Uh, I think my piston ring tools in there, so deep in there. Feeler gauges. You can do valve adjustments. The Honda Honda tool for for valve adjustments. Uh, random fluid drawer or. It used to be my like uh, RTVs and stuff, random things. Random electro electrical drawer. I'm sure a lot of people's drawers look like that if you have a tool. Your drawer like that. Uh, more random stuff. About my list and stuff. Uh, just random stuff. And then, and to the shop, the other, other box that I have is this red one. Kind of just like my random special stuff that I have now. I don't refer to it too much because I've tried consolidating more stuff, but it's more boxes, torque wrenches that I've had that I've outdated or updated. So let's see what in here that I use a lot. Um, I used to use this a lot. <laughs> there are sensor sockets that uh, it works good on. I did knock sensors or oil pressure sensors on uh, on a Corvette, and I didn't have the sensor because it's a really random. It's a random mass socket. So this thing actually has a, has a sensor, the sensor, uh, socket I needed. It was like, I think this one. This is what, what I needed and it worked out perfectly. And it has like the two sensor ones. Your standard 22 and like the offset ones. So they work out pretty good for a lot of tight spots. And not these are other tools that I've acquired over the trade that I've kind of put in here. Nothing too exciting. This one's pretty good. I have a, I have the Mac one now. This is what I used to do before. And I used to use, use this at the BMW dealership. It works perfectly. It's a vacuum air bleeder. Uh, if you guys have ever used one, you just put it inside the cooling system, tighten it, pull vacuum, and then it'll pull out all the air from the cooling system and you'll see it like be really tight. And then you close, close it, you can check for leaks too, and then you put another adapter and you fill it with a cooling bottle. And it works really good for no air pockets. So I used to use that at a dealership. And I use it on some cars. Well, most cars I work on now I use that. Uh, another snap-on cleaning pressure tester. 
I have another one too. So some kind of sits in here. Uh, refrigerant sniffer. I use these with pretty good luck when you're looking for evaps. Um, sometimes condensers or like leaking hoses if you can't find them all too well. Um, more missed stuff. If you guys have ever had issues with uh, axles, I have like the weed thread kit. It works out pretty good. So if we doing axle axles or like lug bolts or anything those big bolts that's a pretty cool set to have you don't need it but here I, like i said i'm just a one-man shop so i try and provide most tools that i ever really need snap ring pliers there's a drum one somewhere um like a water pump pulley holder two fender uh and fitting these are kind of cool if you make and fittings for like custom fuel lines no i just tore the box so if you make a uh, few lines, this thing will actually hold the hose in place and you can put the fitting in here, run the line through it and then you kind of just clamp it in and uh, it works really good. I don't make too many custom fuel lines anymore, but I used to, not back in the day, but a couple years ago when I was doing custom stuff. So they have this one, put this one and they have a bigger set for bigger fuel lines. So like uh, radiators, oil lines, location kits and stuff. Uh, here's just more random stuff. I have a hammer drill, brake flare. So if you make custom hard lines, you need like a 45 and double bubbles. This will do that. 12 point axle set, another timing gun. Fuck, I don't know what's in those other boxes. Oh, and their tie rod tool, this is kind of cool. You know I just use adjustable wrenches, but when you don't need them or you need special tools, this is what they're for. Oh, spring compressor. Yeah, most of these tools are kind of one-off times, but the time they need to use them is nice to have it because if you're by yourself and you're screwed, then you sometimes you need a tool when you don't have a second person. These are all tools you don't really need, but these are all tools that I have. And I like to buy tools. I have a problem with tools, so. Danny, how much do you think you spent on all these tools? So I think toolboxes and all the tools I've had, uh, I'd probably say somewhere in the range of 40 to 50K. Uh, I mean, honestly, with $10,000 $10, worth of tools, you can have the same amount. Well, you can have one set of all the tools you would need, but when you buy special sockets and extras and doubles and two sets, and it adds up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Uh, this was a nice toolbox breakdown by Danny. Thank you, Danny, again for giving us the tour and showing us what you got. So till next time, guys, I'll catch you guys later. Peace! Okay, okay, okay.